All right, let's get right to it. This is for Ocean City High School, Mr. Mark Benedetto, biology teacher. And this is the first set of questions. So astronomy class questions, number one. Uh, hi, Mark, the Mets, Mets, and, uh, thanks for that other app link on the map. Okay, uh, here are the first set of questions. I will follow with another email and with the other questions. So number one, and these are, a little scattered, but that's fine. What do you think about the hollow earth theory? What inspired you to research and inform people about flat earth? Uh, I love the hollow earth theory. As a matter of fact, that was what I first got into back in 2014. Like even before 2014, I was I was into hollow earth and it was a lot of fun. Um, and what hollow earth basically means is it doesn't necessarily mean that the whole earth is hollow, like a, like a Dyson sphere. Look that up if you get a chance, Star Trek people. Uh, it just means that there's big, big caverns underneath the crust that civilizations could live in and i absolutely believe in that and, and absolutely could happen and it it's fine it absolutely dovetails fine with flat earth uh what inspired you to research and infor inform people about flat earth i didn't i didn't want to talk to people about flat earth at all i hated it uh everybody hates it when they when they first get into it in fact if you, if you watch the documentary behind the curve or if you look at any of my uh, other interviews that i've done i got into it because i was looking for answers I tried to shoot Flat Earth down for nine months, starting in the summer of 2014, leading all the way up until February 10th, 2015, and then gave up. Couldn't couldn't solve it on my own. Could not figure this out. Couldn't figure out why I couldn't prove a, a globe in, in the court, court of law anymore. So I made a series of videos called Flat Earth Clues and put them out on the internet and said, okay, internet hive mind who misses nothing, tell me where I went wrong. And so, no, I absolutely did not want to get into Flat Earth at all. But the but maybe a simpler answer to your question is uh, I was bored with all the other conspiracies. It looked, I have an opinion on just about every conspiracy you could think of. And I, had been, uh, I, I was bored. There was nothing new. And everyone knows about Flat Earth and everybody hates it. And so it's like, ah, I'll, I'll look into it. Biggest mistake ever. Uh, questions from Nico. Whoever Nico is. Sounds like a jerk. I'm kidding, Nico. I love you. I really do. Uh, number one, if the earth is flat, why can't you just go to the edge of it and prove it? Mm, very good. Uh, mostly because of the Antarctic Treaty. Look it up. It was, uh, I believe it was ratified in 1959. Look up the Antarctic Treaty, the only unbroken treaty in the history of treaties, which says that no corporation from any country, no matter how big and how much money they have, can set up anything in Antarctica. Antarctica is a no-go zone for, I mean, yes, you're a tourist, fine, you can you can spend $15,000 American and go to the edge, you know, to the, the, the coastline of Antarctica and have your picture taken with penguins and go around when, in rafts and stuff, but if you're a corporation, you cannot do anything there ever, for forever, it's, in fact, it's not even up for debate until 2041, so look into that if you get a chance. So no, no one can go to the edge and prove it. De definitely not us. Uh, number two, why would the government be faking planets and stars? There is no point of them doing it. Uh, it's a pretty unimportant lie. First of all, I don't know if any lies are unimportant. And, and we lie a lot in a lot of different aspects of our lives, especially institutions. However, uh, don't mistake, you know, the government isn't faking planets and stars. We have nothing to do with the building of this place. The American government, no government has, has anything to do with the building of this place. Uh, all we did was keep the secret. All we did was look up at the stars, uh, you know, and the planets and the ceiling and say, oh, no, those aren't just lights on the ceiling. Those are stars and solar systems millions and millions and millions of miles away. And that's all they did. That's all, that's all they did. They just, they just put names to the lights in the sky. Uh, number three, do flat earthers believe in climate change? Yes, but not a lot of them. I do, but I'll get into that. If you believe that ice walls from Antarctica are surrounding the edge of the earth, what would happen if they melted? Something really, really bad. So let, let's, let's get the first part. Uh, climate change. Do I believe in it? Yes. Why? Because if we're living in an enclosed system, then doesn't everything about that system make more sense when it comes to climate change? For example, greenhouse gases. Doesn't the, even the term greenhouse gases make more sense if it's actual greenhouse with a structure over it? And atmospheric pressure. 
How does that happen when there's a vacuum of space, when there's no barrier supposedly out there and the vacuum of space will just rip the atmosphere completely off this? And you say, oh, no, it's gravity. <laughs> Look into that a little further. Um, so if Antarctica, remember, Antarctica, by the way, is not made up entirely of ice. There's a huge ice coating on it, but, uh, but it's still a landmass. There's still minerals. There's a mountain range made out of coal, and there's all sorts of, of I mean, it's still earth. You know, it's still dirt and stuff the ice would only go so much but yes there are some massive massive ice formations uh but i do think the the automated processes of this place would compensate for it i do uh with the ice caps melting in antarctica are the ice walls surrounding the earth melting as well yes yeah they are uh look it up if you get a chance and by the way we're not saying that i mean yes they're ice walls but we're not talking about game of thrones ice walls we're only talking about the coastline of antarctica which is mostly an ice shelf you know, 150, 200 feet high, maybe, at the, at the most. And it's not completely, you know, that's that's not entirely what it is. Uh, but yes, that would also help to it. Um, number four, no disrespect, but are you being serious? <laughs> or do you say things all just for fun and to make things controversial? Uh, the, the short version of that question is, you might as well just said, are you a troll? No, I hate trolls. I loathe trolls. Uh, trolls are the bane of the internet, and I have seen them since the beginning. You guys aren't old enough to remember when the internet was new, but there were, there's been trolls there since the beginning. Ever since the first forums that were out there, when and I'm not, not well, you know what, I'm going to pick on them. Women get a pass for this. It's all young men. When young men realized that they could log on anonymously and say anything they wanted <laughs> with no repercussions whatsoever, oh, what a slippery slope that turned out to be. Anyway, but yes, I'm absolutely serious. No question. No, look, I, I hated Flat Earth. Didn't want to get into it at all. When I made the Flat Earth clues, it was a cry for help saying, look, Internet, prove me wrong. And instead of just tons and tons of people contacting me and say, you're, you know, you're terrible. This is a, you know, a horrible theory and here, you're wrong and here's why. I had people from all branches of the armed forces. I had engineers. I had air traffic controllers. I had pilots. You name it. They were contacting me saying, you know what? It's not that crazy. Here's why. And they would, they, and it just snowballed uh, after that. So no, absolutely, absolutely being totally serious. And if I wasn't being serious, you gotta remember the clues are, what is today, the seventh? Uh, the clues are th seven years old coming up in three days. What, when, when am I going to reveal my master plan? <laughs> if it, if I am trolling, it's the greatest troll ever because I've been trolling for seven years. No, no, not a chance. Uh, number five, besides your YouTube channel and being involved in promoting flat earth, do you have a job or career? I used to, but now, no, no, I don't. Um, in fact, I'm one of the first uh, few people that it could actually do this full time. Um, meaning, you know, I make a little money off the YouTube channel. At least I did until the whole medical misinformation thing. That's a whole nother story for another time, which you probably won't be allowed to talk about in this class. Um, <clears throat> make a little money off the books, make a little money off the radio show I do on Tuesdays. And uh, every once in a while I get an endorsement. Uh, those are the big things. I mean, if, if you get an endorsement, from any corporation. And in fact, I'll, I'll even give you a quick link to one, uh, one I did. Um, I did a, uh, a television commercial for a mobile company down in Australia. They just flew me down and paid me, you know, easiest nine hours of work I've ever done in my life. And I've told people, like, look, as long as I get to say flat earth on camera, I don't care what it looks like. You can sit me in a chair and throw pies in my face and I'm going to do it. Uh, and to give you a great example of how things change, I was on my way to a McDonald's commercial that they lined me up for in London. I didn't even have an agent, and I was doing this. And that's and then the pandemic happened and the borders closed. That was it. So, and I made a little money on real estate before I got into this, so I'm, I'm not dying. Let's put it that way. Uh, number six, if there is no moon, what causes the tidal system? Great... Great point. And it's not saying, by the way, there isn't a moon. I'm just saying that it's not 2,000 miles wide and it doesn't, uh, isn't tied to our tides in any way, shape, or form. And if it's only less than 100 miles wide, let's say it's 50 miles wide, then it's definitely not tied to our tides because the last thing you would do if you were building this place is turn this tiny little object into a direct gravitational force and, and try to affect the, uh, the water. No, what's happening down here with the tidal system, that's happening down here meaning it's just part of the physics engine. 
that's tied to this world. Everything in this world is artificial, including the tidal system. By the way, you might want to ask your teacher why the tides only work on saltwater bodies and not freshwater, no matter how big it is. I want to look into that. Number seven, with all of the advanced technology that we are fortunate enough to have today, how come you have no scientific proof or pictures that the Earth is flat? Okay, if you really want to know and prove it, why not do everything you could possible to prove it? Yes, you're absolutely right, and we do everything that we can, but we're limited because the people that are hiding it are way bigger than us and have way more resources and are willing to do horrible things to keep the secret. Wouldn't you? I've had different journalists come at me and say, well, you know, wouldn't you break the story? Wouldn't you let the people know? It's like, no, if there's a 5% chance that the people would run around and panic and run through the streets with torches and pitchforks, you're not going to let that happen. So, but we have, we have tried everything that you can. What, what we try to do is physical tests. You know, the laser tests, the long distance photography tests, uh, the vacuum tests. You, you name it, we've, we've come up with it. Some fantastic tests are out there, and it's on a playlist on my channel called Experiments. And we do it every chance we can, and the media is not allowed to talk about it much. In fact, even the documentary Behind the Curve, uh, the tests that they picked out of all the tests we had done at that point, the tests that they picked were the worst ones ever and the power of editing. They hated us. Don't forget that the people that made that movie were not Flat Earthers and they loathed Flat Earth at the end. Mostly because they couldn't believe that we believed it. He, they still, to this day, the director does not think that I believe it. He thinks, no, you're you're just trying to con people. It's like, why would I do that? <laughs> I go, Flat Earth gets, gets picked on all the time. Anyway, um... Number eight, related to the edge. How come no one has seen it? Uh, the military has. The United States military has. Probably the Soviet Union before they broke up uh, saw it. Uh, but you, they're not going to tell anybody. That's that's part of the game. That when the when the government finds out something, look, information is the the most powerful form of currency. Always has been. And once you figured this out, could you would you tell the public? No, not until you could figure out a way to introduce it into the, the public world that would be advantageous to you. You're just not going to do it. Um, what would happen if you tried to go to the edge? You're not going to be able to make it. Um, uh, the Antarctic Treaty forbids most people from even getting close to it. Because remember, the Antarctic coastline is just the beginning of Antarctica. You would have to go thousands of miles inland before you ran to the... The United States military... Again, I don't know how much you guys know about the backstory. The United States military flew around there for 30 years, from the 20s all the way up until the mid-50s, before they even found it. Flew around and around and around with their best best personnel. Could not find the edge. Could not find the outer marker. Um, would boats be able to get there? Nope. Uh, because you got to do landfall eventually. And the end, the Antarctica is just a place that screams go away. Let's say you had a boat, which is a great argument. Um, it, let's say... In the 1700s, you had a boat and you had all the maps. What would you do when you got to Antarctica? There's no plant life, no animal life that you could use, no natural resources that you can you, you could get at that time. And it's just ice and snow and more ice and more snow. So, no. Uh, would water fall out into space? Ah, who told you there was space to begin with? What I'm saying is that you're living in a building with walls and a floor and a ceiling that is so big that even our best and brightest didn't figure it out until almost 1960. You could be living in a snow globe on somebody's desk in a laboratory. You're not going to know. So no, there is no space. Who told you there was space? The United States military? Those guys? Mm. Uh, do you all do? Did you always think the Earth was flat? No, no, uh, absolutely, I did not. I did not think about it. In fact. I wasn't even sure it was flat until I was deep into it. So up until most of my life, um, up until 2015, I didn't think the earth was flat. And even then I was going, no, it can't be. Denial is the most powerful and predictable human emotion. No. If not, what changed your viewpoint on it? Uh, was there a childhood event that made you believe this? No, it wasn't a childhood event at all. I grew up in a very sheltered environment in an island in the northwest corner of the United States, away from everybody, very near Canada. Canada's right up the road from here. So, um, what was it? Uh, what changed your viewpoint on it? The big thing that changed my mind was the Antarctic Treaty, believe it or not, which was, you guys know, look, this world runs on money and greed and power. That's what it's, it's always has run on that. And w look, if here's, here's what got me. If you guys have heard of what fracking is, if, so, if a group of a petroleum company wanted to start fracking in your backyard next week, they could make that happen. Absolutely could make it happen. 
through various means. And yet these same companies, not only are they not allowed to go down to Antarctica to get any of those resources, they're not even allowed to talk about it. That is a huge red flag. These companies are not shy about spending their, not, their money. They're not shy about bribing people. That is where I would look first. Uh, number 10, if you were invited up to space and saw the earth was round, would you still believe it was flat? First off, we don't even say that the earth is round. A dinner plate is round. A dining room table is round. Your hubcaps are round. Wait, do they still have hubcaps anymore? Doesn't matter. Uh, we use globe, ball, or sphere. Uh, do, so if I was invited to space and saw the earth was a globe, would you still believe that it was flat? Or I mean, what, basically, would I say that it was flat? No, absolutely not. I've said, look, you want to put me up in space? If I see that it's a globe and you can convince me of this, I'm absolutely going to be like, yep, I quit. In fact, I, I made the, um, uh, the challenge to people years ago. I go, look, I don't even have to be sent to space. I go, take a picture. Find me a picture that you took from anything, from a, an airplane or, or a, you know, high mountaintop. And you say, oh, no, I'm because I've had people come to me every single week say, I've seen the curve from an airplane. I've seen the curve from an airplane. And I put the challenge out there. I go, fine, you think you saw the curve? Take a picture of it with your with your phone. And then put it on your laptop or whatever and hold a straight edge up to it. You know, a little straight edge like this. Straight edge, old school. Hold it up to it and tell me if that curve's still there. If it is, you can email it to me. I'll quit Flat Earth tomorrow. But you have to take the shot. Don't show me the Red Bull shot. Don't show me stuff from NASA. Show me a shot that you took. And then, of course, I will shoot back a, a thing that Neil deGrasse Tyson, the world's most famous scientist, what he said about the Red Bull jump, he said it was scientifically dishonest. And you know what? I will include that link from that question. I got to remember this. I will include that link to the, the Neil deGrasse Tyson. It's only three minutes long. Play it for your class. You'll totally get that. Uh, number 11, the last question of this particular class. It's been noted online that you are a video gamer. I was just curious what games you play. You know what? I don't know who came up with that question, but it's great. Uh, yes, I played games for a living back in the day. Uh, ooh, stuff way before you guys. I started with a, a little game called Crystal Caliber and Pinball. I won a world tournament and then parlayed that into a producer job at a video game company. Back in the 90s, when no one was playing games for a living, I was actually playing games professionally. And then... Um, but the games that I, I ended up playing later, oh boy, uh, let's go. Anything by Blizzard, first off. Anything, um, Diablo, StarCraft, Warcraft. I, I played Warcraft for six, uh, 16 years before I finally quit, before they did the level squish. But I have Guilty Pleasure games also that I love. I love Bejeweled 3. I think it's a fantastic game. Uh, I love um, uh, Plants vs. Zombies. I think that is one of the most defensively, perfectly structured games ever. And the last one is, I, I used to joke, I said, if, um, if Warcraft was my wife, then Fallout 3 would be my mistress. Fallout 3 and all the mods to Fallout 3 were gorgeous. Absolutely a wonderfully bleak game. Uh, loved it, loved it, loved it. All right, that's it. So thank you very much. And I will be on to my next group of questions from the other class, not you guys. But you guys are by far the cooler group. <laughs> See ya. Okay, this is, what are we doing? This is Ocean City High School biology teacher, Mr. Mark Benedetto. This is classroom astronomy, astronomy classroom question set two. Hi, Mark. Here are the seventh period class questions. Obviously, seventh period is cooler than any other class, but we'll see. Uh, number one, given what that that we learned the round earth is tilted on its axis and causes our seasons, what is a flat earther's explanation for the seasons? Okay, um, and without, I, you might be able to show them on the app, and I'll maybe I'll put the link here for the app, but the sun and the moon, if they're very, very small and very, very close, you know, less than 50 miles wide and maybe, I don't know, two or 3,000 miles up, give or take, um, they also, and it's going to date me, they're like a needle on a record player. So a needle on a record player um, doesn't take the same path every time. As, as the record plays, it goes further, further in, and it goes further, further out. Uh, you know, if we put it in reverse. So that would be my explanation for the seasons. Uh, and again, the, the graphic would probably show that a little better than how I explained it. Uh, number two, how do you disprove the Coriolis force since it proves... <laughs> that the earth is a spinning globe which acts perpendicular to the direction of motion oh, okay who's the nerd in this class 
Okay, which acts perpendicular to the direction of motion of a spinning mass. The Cor Coriolis force also explains how cyclones spin. Mm -hmm. A perfect textbook answer. Therefore, what do you have to say about natural disasters and how they work on this round globe? <laughs> By the way, the fact you it's redundant. You don't say round globe. Just say globe. You don't have to say round globe. But the Coriolis effect, which I love, if you guys know, we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll dumb it down because whoever asked this is definitely a pro-science person and probably hates me. Okay, so the Coriolis effect is like a merry-go-round. And I don't know if you guys have been on a merry-go-round before, but if you try to hold on while it's spinning faster and faster, it, it, it wants to pull you off. You want to get flown off to the side. However, you're standing in the middle of the, the merry-go-round. The weather's fine. Nothing happens. You just turn in a circle really, really, really slowly. So here's, and forget about the, the cyclone spin. Here's the bigger question for, for, for you, which is if the water, as you know, water is very, very susceptible to all sorts of force. Why isn't, the, why aren't the oceans bulged? around the middle of the earth like a like a spare tire like the like the ice rings of saturn which is a whole another story why why isn't there's huge mass of water in fact why are there why is there any dry land on the equator at all if it's spinning at a thousand miles an hour at the uh at the equator why is it why why is that 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 not the case hmm? and and why in fact why is there water at the north pole and the south pole it, that sort of force should be pulling that water. Don't tell me it's like, oh no, it's not strong enough to do that water. Look, if I make a hard left turn while holding a drink in my hand, that drink is going. And that's just a hard left turn. That much, that much ocean, you are going to get a bulge at the center and it is absolutely not there. Nor is it on any other planet for that matter, which is weird. In fact, all we see is rings, but anything, gas, liquids, nope, not happening. Uh, number one, I imagine this is the same person. Uh, this goes along with the above question. How do you explain circular motions of the ocean currents, cloud patterns, and wind patterns? Okay, I will. What I will do is I will attach. I'm going to have to do this with a couple of the questions, and definitely from the last class, I got to remember. Which is there is if you look at the the AE map, the azimuthal equidistant projection of, of Earth, which is the UN flag, by the way, which is also our the the flat Earth flag. And you put, doesn't matter what you put on there, whether it be the jet stream or the water currents or whatever it is, it looks way more natural on that map than it does on a globe. And so I, what I will do, I will counter your question with a question. I will send you the slide and hopefully your teacher will show this to you and show it to the class. Show me, tell me why on that, on our map, the, pa the, the currents look way more natural than it does on uh, the uh, the globe tell me that uh, number three how can you tell what direction northwest east and south uh, is if the earth is a flat disk with the north pole the center you're absolutely right there is no um, north south east or west there's just the center uh, I mean we could call it north because you know we have no other name for it except for the north pole so on an AE map or otherwise known as the UN flag otherwise known as the flat earth map the north pole is at the center uh, but if you took away the words north, yeah, there is no north, south, or east, or west. There, there just isn't. The only way you can even measure them are on the old maps because that's just how we build things. Um, but no, no, there is no there is no northwest, east, and south on the flat earth map at all. There is the, the center and then the outer markers and then the continents. That's it. There, there are the, We don't have the letters on the side. Uh, number four, you seem to not have a scientific background, yet you believe you know more about the earth than professional scientists who dedicate their entire lives to the subject. They have degrees. Do you think the government paid all of them off? Oof. Okay, the first part, it, I'm not going to take it as an insult. I've heard this before. Um, let, let's answer the, the last question first, which is, do I think the government paid all these people off? No. No, I don't. And other people say, well, you know, are you smarter than Einstein and Stephen Hawking and all this? No, no, I'm not. Uh, science has, and I'm not picking on the, the teacher here, science has a nasty habit of building on previous science uh, work, some of the old sayings, you know, standing on the, the, the backs of giants, um, without checking the original work. Uh, look up a guy named Nikola Tesla, who, you know, very... Uh, different type of scientist and he invented a lot of amazing things and i don't even know if he was completely human but whatever uh he was the one that the first one that said that 
science tends to build on on each other's work to where you get up to a certain height and by the time you get up to this height the equations are meaningless because none of those people on the ladder check the foundation if the foundation is wrong then everything else is wrong no i don't have the math skills of einstein and stephen hawking and and any of the the, the great people in science but if their work was wrong if they made a wrong, huge assumptions that were wrong then it's wrong plain and simple and don't think for a second by the way that science can't get things wrong you know what i will include a slide on that question too i will include the um the coelacanth fish which i love so much um this was a fish that was had a whole it was an ugly fish a horribly horrible looking fish and a bunch of extra fins and uh, science was absolutely convinced absolutely convinced and every scientist in the world agreed this thing had been extinct for at least 70 million years at least 70 million years and then around 1940 uh the british navy found one off the coast of south, south africa they caught one in a net and then another one off of mozambique another one off of madagascar and then pretty soon there's like oh wow they're all over the place in africa so what happened why did every every scientist in the world was absolutely wrong why was this well because they made a huge assumption it's like well we have the fossil with this fish we carbonated the fossil at 70 million years old therefore that fish cannot be alive but it is so what happened so and and you know i don't want to drag this out too much but l let me take this one step further and that is uh we've all heard of the loch ness monster right is there are there plesiosaur dinosaurs swimming around scotland in a lake and there's other lakes it's not just scotland are they swimming around there and people say oh no it's a hoax and blah 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 it's like no it can't be well the the general scientific response is well no why well because they've been dead for at least 100 million years you mean like that fish over there fish with the extra fins that fish is still around so why aren't there dinosaurs that's like well because we haven't found one we haven't caught one we would have run into one by now it's like you didn't find that fish for a long time look up something called the um the billy ape which i love bringing up which is uh, a six foot tall chimpanzee that they finally found finally discovered in 2015 it took them that long to find it because they were really good about hiding from people they don't like people for good reason because we capture people you know things like that i mean don't forget in cryptozoology look that up if you get a chance um everything was a myth everything in science is a myth until they have it literally sitting in front of them so the giant panda was a myth the giant anaconda was a myth the giant squid not a myth but they still haven't caught one but they know there's pieces of them they find in whales so they know it's around but again, the, the, before, before that, you know, science throws that at people, which is, it's, it's, only, it's only true when we say it's true. Really? My, my response to that is science is only um, right until the day that it's not. And then they really should admit that they're wrong, but they never do. Okay, moving on. Number five, if the earth is flat, then how are we able to see horizons? You mean, why is there a horizon at all? Great. Um, that is because the why is the horizon the, actually the, the correct way to phrase that question is why is the horizon so close and that is because what I am talking to you in what this stuff around me is only 99.9% .9 transparent you remember you're you're not sitting in a vacuum you're sitting in mostly nitrogen in fact what you're breathing now is less than 20% oxygen and it's 80% nitrogen let's forget about the trace gases for now just nitrogen oxygen anyone that's ever scuba dived they'll, they'll be able to tell you this and because that has a thickness over distance that gets thicker and thicker so it becomes 90 percent 80 percent 70 percent you know transparent until i think the limits you know only about uh, less than 300 miles at sea level but when you get higher up like in an airplane you can see much much further so and and the follow-up to that question i'll ask it even before you do which is uh, why can't you see japan from california why can't you see europe from the east coast from new york and why can't you see mount everest from everywhere and that's because we don't live in a vacuum that's all if we were in a vacuum you would be able to see these things they'd be seen very very far in fact we we've seen plane shots um there was some wonderful footage from the sr-71 spy plane he didn't even know he was just he goes around the country touring it's like oh yeah i flew the coolest plane ever and uh and he said oh yeah from phoenix i could see the uh, the los angeles coastline and i could see all the way up to canada well if you do the curve calculator on that that's not possible if it's a curve if it's a globe he didn't know couldn't see the forest for the trees uh number six if there is no sun then how does the earth get warm oh, you mentioned the ocean currents warm up the earth but what do you think warms up the ocean currents no i mean remember everything is artificial so the the warmth comes from multiple things no i i didn't say if there is no sun i didn't say there was no sun obviously there's a sun up there and obviously it generates heat but it's not the only heat source that we have 
uh, also the jet stream up, up above that carries the air currents, uh, also the underwater conveyor system, which you just mentioned there, and then the magma system down below. But they're all artificial, and then they all combined come up with stuff. You know, when you're when you're in the car, for example, I know this is a simple explanation. You don't get just heat from the heater. You could also get it from the heated seats and whatever else you got going in the back seat. Uh, let's see. Ba -ba -da -ba -da. Number seven, how can Earth be hollow and flat at the same time? It seems these are the biggest theories out there with the following. Great question. And my definition of hollow Earth is different than most people's definition. You're right. A true hollow Earth, like if it's a complete Dyson sphere, hollow globe, can't exist with the same thing as flat Earth. However, what we have realized over several years is that hollow Earth civilizations, if you want to put a civilization in a subterranean cavern it wouldn't have to be that big you gotta remember like for example uh think about how high you go how high you go um with different craft here um most of our population for example lives between sea level and one mile up you know less than six thousand feet airplanes commercial airliners cap out at less than 10 miles Spy planes cap out at less than 20 miles. So if you were made a cavern that, I don't know, 50, 100 miles high, which is not very big in the grand scheme of things and made it very, very wide and very, very long, you could put a full-blown civilization in there and poten potentially not even tell any people, uh, anybody about it. In fact, who's to say we're not in some sort of hollow earth scenario, right? I mean, if we're in a, some sort of building, where is that building? Could be in a cave for all we know. Uh, let's see, but, uh, number eight, if the earth is flat, that's, that what explains, oh boy, <laughs> I'm going to blame Mr. Benedetto for the grammar on this one. Uh, if the earth is flat, what explains, you didn't need that extra that, uh, what explains the space photos of it being round? <laughs> How would those live stream streams of people going to uh, space be fake? uh how would how would how would you fake space it's easy uh, we've been faking space since the 1960s it is not hard to do uh it was in fact it is it is so easy to do now i mean ever since photoshop came out come on let's face it you can fake anything you want you guys you guys know full well what can be faked on photoshop and you know what deep fakes are i'm not gonna go i'm not gonna include any links here you know what deep fakes are you know what we can do with video now so don't think for a second that, that things can't be faked in space. Don't think for a second. I mean, look up, look up a classic movie. I highly recommend it for this class, 2001 A Space Odyssey. That was made in 1968. Watch that on Blu-ray and tell me what you can do in, in 1968. And then follow that up with something, uh, gra Gravity, with Sandra Bullock. I think it was Gravity. Was it called Gravity? I think it was called Gravity. Uh, those are just gorgeous shots, and those could be interspliced anywhere you want with NASA footage, and it's even better than NASA footage. So no, abs absolutely everything in space when it comes to uh, the the stuff is fake. Uh, anyway, uh, number nine. In fact, maybe I'll sh I'll shoot some examples to that one. Number nine. What is behind the ice wall? I heard there are other continents. If they are there, what are on them? Another civilization. Uh, yes, that's what I, I believe as well. Now, when you say the ice wall, you th I know you're thinking of the whole Game of Thrones thing. No, what we're saying is the continent of Antarctica is, and this is mainstream science, this isn't me, starts at about 200 feet at the beach, and it goes up to, I think the whole thing is a plateaus out at 14,000 feet, which is incredible considering altitude sickness kicks in at about 7,000 feet. It's, it's, it's the most unusual continent, even by mainstream standards. It's unusual. I mean, no other continent's that that high all the, all the way in, in. It's just incredible. So, but it, as far as continents behind it, yeah, that's what I would think is there's other civilizations. We are not the first people to rent this apartment, not by any stretch. We will not be the last. And other civilizations, they're kind of like your senior class. Which is once you graduate from this place, I think other civilizations have been here before. Look up things of, I don't know, the Bosnian pyramids, the real pyramids, Bimini Road, Puma Punku, the sunken cities off of Japan, the sunken cities off of India. We are not the first people here. There are remnants all over the place. But when you run your course, like we're going to run our course, I think you, you have to graduate and go home. You know, I mean, you can't stay here like anything. Senior class has to go so another class can, can come in. 
Uh, so, but I, you know what? I'll include a map. There's a wonderful map that's supposedly like a thousand years old that shows our continents and then the barriers and then other continents outside. Uh, in fact, I, I don't know if I sent to, I, I don't know if I sent it to Mr. Benedetto, but we'll find out. Uh, last question. Number 10 regarding hollow earth. Why do you guys keep asking about hollow earth? Could we tunnel down to reach to the other side? No, no, you can't. Uh, you guys can look this up yourself. It was one of the intriguing things about Flat Earth, which was, does it prove Flat Earth? No, but it's really interesting, which is the deepest hole ever drilled. Love this because you guys, you can look up in your textbooks and that is, it shows, it's like, what's the core of the Earth look like? And it's these perfect thousand mile thick bands, which is, you know, goes, you know, red and orange and yellow and then this white perfect center. And it's like, wow, that's pretty cool. How do you know that? What's the deepest probe you ever sent down there? Remember, it's like 4,000 miles to the center of the Earth. If you believe that? Well, what's the deepest hole ever drilled? 2,000 miles? 1,000? 100? 10? No, the deepest hole ever drilled is 8 miles. Pretty amazing, huh? 8 miles. That's it. It's the deepest we've ever, we've ever drilled. Can't get past it. The, the Russians and the, the Germans tried for years to try to get past it. Could not, could not do it. Bits kept melting. Things kept breaking. Whatever's down there, it's not letting them through. Now, could you, if you were clever and you knew about military technology, could you use atomic weapons and maybe blow big chunks down there? I don't know, maybe, but I got a funny feeling it's not going to get any further. So no, you're not tunneling down to anything. Deepest hole, and by the way, follow-up question to that is, so if the deepest hole drilled is 8 miles, 12 kilometers, what exactly is in the science books? What are you, what are you showing us with that cross-section? And it's like, oh, it's a, it's a guess. It's an estimated, you know, blah, blah. And it's like, well, why isn't it in the small print there? In fact, here's the part that throws, again, I'm not picking on the teacher, but why in, instead of these, these bands, which make no sense whatsoever. And by the way, if you're telling us the, what our bands are, why are you showing me the core of Jupiter? <laughs> why are you showing me the core of Neptune? If that's it, why isn't there just a big question mark in the center? Science doesn't like doing that. Science makes a statement. This is what it is until we say otherwise. Okay. Anyway, thank you very much. Period seven. Uh, out of all the the people that I have I have had to do questions for, you guys are by far the most recent. <laughs> See ya.